The start of the day was gen generally the late afternoon. The, the fishermen would uh, get out of bed and the crews would assemble on Fisherman's Wharf, generally about five or six o'clock. And this was in the later times when the sardines uh, were being caught in great numbers by purseiners. So the, uh, the families would follow and everybody would be standing around in groups and the crews stayed in one group, each waiting for the skipper to show up. And as soon as the skipper showed up and he checked to make sure that his uh, crew was ready to go, then they all uh, went uh, down below the uh, fisherman's wharf and got onto their skiffs and rowed out to their boats and this is just as the sun was going down. So all the families that were left behind at Fisherman's Wharf then got in their cars and drove as the boats were going out, followed along Lighthouse Avenue out to the point. And that, at that point, uh, the sun had gone down. It's either 7, 6.30 or 7. And uh, so you could see the, all the, the boats, the purseiners sailing out, heading out to the bay in great numbers and once they just disappeared and you couldn't see them anymore then we went home and almost every house had a shortwave radio and turned the radio on and turned it to the shortwave station that the fishing boats were on and we would listen to the fishing boats on the radio and we'd all listen for our father's voice because they would have to call they have to use a, um, a call letters. Each boat was assigned the call letters, and my father's uh, boat's name, the Aeneas, had the call letters W-O-V-O. -O. So whoever was on the radio, generally it was the captain, he would call out, this is W-O-V-O, -O, the Aeneas calling W-V-P-P, -P, the Western Flyer, or the city of Monterey, and he would ask, where are you? You see any fish? And uh, they would say, well, we're out here by Santa Cruz or we're off Davenport, and it looks like there's a lot of fish up here. They fished at night, and the reason they fished at night so that they could see the schools. The sc as the schools went through the water, they excited the zooplankton, and the zooplankton uh, released a phosphorus. And there was sort of a milky glow as the sardine schools went through the water. And uh, so the captain... Uh, had the most important job in the fishing industry. He had to decide what that was. Either they were sardines or they were mackerel or anchovies or it could be a whale or it could be uh, a school of uh, sea lions. So by experience, the captain had to, de had to decide whether or not it was sardines. In most cases, it was sardines. But if you're a captain, they can pretty much determine just by the movement how fast they're moving in the direction they're going. The captain then had to make the calculation which way he would circle the fish because once you laid out the net and circled the fish, you, you had to arrive at a point where you could connect the two, side, two ends of the, of the persane net. And you had to be in such a position so that if the wind or tide was blowing in a certain direction that the net would not collapse into the boat collapse or stay out away from the boat and then they would pull in the purse line and close the bottom of the net and that would capture the fish. Once the, the purse net was closed then they would haul the net up on the boat and once they had the fish closed to the side of the boat in almost every case the fish realized they were trapped and they would try to sound or just go try to go to the bottom which was a typical schooling fish uh, technique of escape, especially if uh, fish, uh, larger predators were above them, they would try and go down. 
And what that would do is they would hit the bottom of the net and the boat would tip over slightly and the fishermen then were in a battle to pull the fish up to the surface. And once the fish gave up, then they had them. But sometimes it was a battle because if you had 150 ton or 300 tons in the net, uh, it, was a, it was a battle. Once the, the fish realized that the game was up, they surfaced and the, the, the water boiled at the surface and then the fishermen began to braille the, the fish into the, uh, into the boat until they were complete. And then they would stack the net back on the boat. Once the fishermen had made their catch, sometimes it was early in the night, they caught fish, uh, say 11 o'clock at night, they would turn around and head back to the canneries. Sometimes they didn't catch fish until four o'clock in the morning. Depending on how far away they were from the canneries, it would take three or four hours to get there. At that point, when the fishermen would radio into the cannery and let the cannery know how much fish they were bringing in and about what time they would arrive, then the canneries would then blow the whistle and call in their workers. And each cannery had a distinctive whistle. It could be three short, one long, one long, two short. Uh, each cannery had their own, own whistle, own sound. And so the, uh, the workers would then come in uh, and uh, wait for the fish to come up into the cannery.